We receive long life and peace when we listen to the Proverbs. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Henry. I'm Janice. This is Quick Study Television. It is a program taking you through the Bible in one year. And I'm glad you decided to join us today as we focus on this subject. We're going to study something very interesting. It is going to be we receive long life and peace if we listen to the commands of Christ and do them. And that's the important part to do them because a lot of people listen, but they don't do them. So I'm going to talk about that and we're going to highlight that in the book of Proverbs today. It is good that you're with us. Corey, what are you doing? Today we're going to be taking a look at more circumstantial evidence from the life of King Solomon. All right, excellent. And mm -hmm. what are you studying today? I'm going to talk a little bit about Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 12. Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 12. Yes. Excellent. All of this is coming your way. All of this is ready. So I want to encourage you to get your Bible out and get your Bible guide out and get ready because Corey Babechko is coming right now to bring us something on Bible history and archaeology. Corey? The Bible gives us many intriguing and unusual uh, pieces of information about the life of King Solomon. Now, King Solomon uh, is one of the authors of the book of Proverbs. So first, let's take a look at Solomon's great wealth. For many, the history of King Solomon in the Old Testament must be written off as fanciful exaggerations of a much lesser reality. Gold-plated temples and palaces with gold-covered floors and ceilings, an ivory throne overlaid with gold, extravagant precious metal articles for both religious and personal use, and large decorative golden shields are just a few of the wonders of Solomon's proposed kingdom. But what does history say? We may want the Bible to be lying and thus to discredit its uncomfortable theology, but what if it's telling the truth? The 10th century BC, the time of Solomon, hasn't enjoyed as many dramatic finds as other time periods. But this is a testament to the recycling nature of ancient builders. When short on space, it's often more productive to renovate previously existing structures, dismantling and reusing the old building materials. Even still, if Solomon's splendor has historic credibility, it should fit well into surrounding ancient cultures. There should be some affinity, some hint that this isn't myth. In fact, Solomon's practices do go well with ancient cultures and are far less crazy than some would have us believe. Personal bowls, goblets, and plates of gold are known to have been in use with many ancient cultures. Decorative golden shields show up in lists of taken goods and reliefs of sacked temples in the records of Assyria. A little-known practice of the ancient Egyptians was the same as that of Solomon, overlaying pillars, rooms, and articles with plates of pounded gold, secured in such a way that the gold could be easily removed. The most famous intact examples come from the tomb of King Tutankhamun. We even have texts from the kings of Assyria explaining how they overlaid their temples with gold. Solomon's lavish throne of ivory decorated with plated gold finds parallels all over the ancient Middle East in destroyed remains of ivory couches, beds, and wall decorations. On yesterday's quick study program, I mentioned that there is no direct evidence of the life of King Solomon. Now, what I mean by direct evidence is there is not an inscription bearing the name of King Solomon as of yet. And there is not an inscription from um, another culture in the ancient Middle East specifically mentioning King Solomon, the son of David. However, there is a lot of circumstantial evidence. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's similar to looking for a needle in a haystack when we're taking a 
look at a specific name of a king, even if that king was very famous at that time period. There is just so much activity that has gone on in that region and so many thousands of years that has passed that it's difficult when you're looking for a, a very specific artifact. However, the life of his father, King David, has been very well established circumstantially, but also through specific references to the dynasty founder, King David. Now, David's line uh, came, uh, from David came the line of all the kings of Judah. They're all related to King David. So he was a very well known and attested to by several ancient artifacts dynasty founder. Now, uh, here uh, we took a look at the, the vast wealth of Solomon fitting very well into the ancient culture of the Middle East and these very specific practices. A little bit later on in the program, we're going to be taking a look at a port city that likely was built by Solomon himself. Two of the key factors to successful living are as simple as A, B, C, and as easy as one, two, three, if you consider it carefully. Now, the easy part is knowing the answer. The hard part is practicing it. It is revealed in Proverbs 3 as my law and my commands. Well, calculating the Jewish way, the laws of the Lord are about 613. And the primary command of God comes from Jesus, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. If we live our lives based on these last two principles, the world would look different than it does now. But wise guys know and understand that this doesn't happen a lot. Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Proverbs 3 is an amazing book. I'll tell you right now, as we look at this and understand it, it's fascinating to me because uh, we started reading Proverbs and I've taken them two chapters at a time until the end. And, and it's important for you to slow down here. And this reading schedule that you have is the quick study reading schedule. And it's not like any other reading schedule because it slows down some part, then it speeds up other times because I want you to pay attention to things. And these two chapters are important, three and four. And as we read Proverbs, I want you to remember that we have a quick study pocket guide. And the quick study pocket guide will help you understand and know the Word of God and what it's saying to you as we look at this. And I'll tell you something, God is speaking. Now, the pocket guide you can get a hold of if you pay attention to us. If you're just watching this program for the first time, my name is Rod Hembry. We'll tell you about how to get that pocket guide later on. It's original uh, to this program. It has a page for every day with a lot of information on it. Get your Bible out. Take a look at this. We are talking about wisdom works. Wisdom works. It does. Amen. That's the review. Now, our reading schedule is Proverbs chapter 3 and 4. If you read 3 and 4, you'll keep up with us through the Bible. Our focus today for encouragement 
is on Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And we will cover three of the four points in the Bible guide. And as we look at this, we just read it. Janice just read it for you. Let's go back now and let's slow down and let's look at what God is saying. Because this is important. Remember, the Holy Spirit has put this book here for you. And so that's fascinating. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. He says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Now think about that. That is amazing. This is the first time in the Bible, one of the first times we receive long life and peace if we listen to the commands of Christ and the laws of his word. Now that is amazing. Now remember that the Proverbs is part of the Bible. There's no New Testament and Old Testament. It's all one. And the Bible justifies itself. Jesus died. Acts 15, we're not under the law, but that means here that we understand that the law says things. Well, Proverbs is the Old Testament, and Proverbs tells us that we will get peace and long life if we listen to the commands of Christ and obey the laws of God. What was it that Jesus said was the greatest law when the, the man came up to him and said, Lord, tell us what the greatest law is. And Jesus said what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That was amazing. That's what Jesus said. And so we have to understand we'll have peace and we'll have long life if we dedicate ourselves to this. There are some times where the persecuted Christians are killed, but that's another story. We'll talk about it in a few days. We go back to the scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. You see, beloved, we find favor and we find high esteem if we love mercy and we love truth, mercy and truth, and we practice it in our lives. Now, many people, they want to love truth. You know, truth is this and that, and if you don't do that, you're going to be killed. Well, that's interesting. But then there's mercy. Mercy is God has mercy on you, fortunately, all of us. And so we say, well, you know, the mercy of God helps us as we get there. Now, between the two, truth and mercy, that's your right on your heart, and you teach both of them. And so you need to understand that the river <laughs> flows between them both. A little bit of both is really important. And so mercy and truth are very important. I, I want to say that to you now. Mercy and truth. As we study the Bible, mercy and truth. As we go through the Bible, mercy and truth. As you articulate your testimony to people, mercy and truth. Very important. All right, so we go back to the scripture then. And the scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, Verses 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't do that. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, capital H, and he, capital H, shall direct your paths. He shall direct your paths. Now think about that because when we understand and when we realize that, we see that we have divine direction from God. If we love him and if we follow after him, divine direction from God. That's fascinating. What does that mean? That means that God himself, the God of the universe, the God of the world, the God of everything is going to instruct us through the Holy Spirit as we submit to him and allow him to work with us. Now, I don't know where you're at today and I don't know how much you've learned or how much you don't learn, but I will tell you this that it is the most amazing miracle in the world that the God of the universe, the God of the globe can say to me, Rod, I will help you, can say to you, I will help you. Now that's an amazing miracle of God and God is going to do that and I, that he's promised to do it and he does do it. I mean, I've been in places where I've, I've been in situations where I said, Lord, I don't know how to get out of this. This is a difficult spot. When I was a young kid, when I was doing things, I'm in a difficult spot. 
And somehow God got me out of it. I prayed and I said, Lord, help me get out of this thing. And that's important for us to remember that God will make a way for us, that he cares about us living right. He cares about our commitments. He cares about the people in our lives. He cares about how we show and how we demonstrate who we are and who we love. It's him. And as we search for God and seek his face and work with the people around us, God changes the very attitudes in our soul. This is so important today. So keep that in your mind as we study on. in today's program, we looked at the great wealth of Solomon and saw that it definitely was feasible and fits into the ancient context of that time period in the Middle East. Right now, you and I are going to look at one of the ways that Solomon actually got that gold and brought it into the nation of Israel. Nestled in amongst King Solomon's very long list of accomplishments is a fleet of ships on the Red Sea constructed with his close ally, Hiram, King of Tyre. 1 Kings chapter 9 records how they worked together to build a fleet of merchant ships at Etzion Gever near Eilat on the shore of the Red Sea. From Etzion Gever, they would send ships to Ophir to acquire the famed gold of Ophir exotic woods and precious gems, and ships to Tarshish that would bring back gold, silver, ivory, and exotic animals. The modern-day identities of Tarshish and Ophir have proven puzzling, but due to an 8th century BC inscription that refers to the gold of Ophir, that they existed is no longer questioned. In the past, historians and respected archaeologists have tried to identify the remains of Etzion Gever. This port city would be somewhere on the Red Sea, the modern Gulf of Eilat and Aqaba. The answer to this ancient mystery may lie in what is now the only natural anchorage in the northern Gulf. The modern-day ports are completely man-made. Just seven miles south of modern Eilat is a small island known as Jazirat Faroon, meaning Pharaoh's Island. Across its surface, there are medieval ruins and the remains of a man-made small harbor that is now mostly filled in with silt. The island is only 900 feet away from the mainland, which forms a large natural anchorage, a natural safe harbor. Paired with the remains of an ancient seawall that went around the entire perimeter of the island, complete with defensive towers that stretched out into the smaller man-made harbor, and Jazirat Faroon begins to look like an interesting option for the home of the fleets of Solomon. Hi, Rod Hembry here with another person behind the camera that is part of our crew, and this is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rod. Now, you have been how long at this ministry? Almost 10 years. 10 years. Yep. You came very young, yep. and you've known me longer. And For she, a really long time. You, you do a lot of things. You do the, I mean, you did the Bible Investigators. You produced yep, that. I did. And uh, you do makeup for me and I for do. Ryan and for everybody every day. But you also are floor director and you do camera yep. and you do directing. I do it all. So you do everything. It's amazing. Yeah. And I want to know how you first met me. I first met you not through Quick City. Actually, you were teaching uh, at a youth group called yes. Rad, and I came one Friday night, I think it was, and mm -hmm. that's how I met you and Corey and Ryan, and I remember Ryan stuck a camera in my face and that made me nervous. 
And so you met me when you were very young, and I remember that. And I was teaching the class, and you were very young, and it was uh, we had a lot of candy. It was a it lot was so much of fun. candy. Yep. That's right. Love so the candy. you've been a part of the ministry now for ten years, and this is exciting. And if you had something that you wanted to say to the partners, somebody's thinking about supporting and maybe not thinking about supporting, what would you say to somebody who is going to support the ministry or thinking about it? Well, you know, partners are so important to us at Quick City, and we really rely on your, your support, not only financially, but but prayerfully. And we, we get your letters, we hear um, all the comments and compliments and questions, we get your questions. Um, I do the graphics now, and so I go through all of the prayer requests, and I pray for all of the requests as they come in, and that's really important for me. So yeah. it's it's really important for, for people to become a partner and support what we're doing because we want to encourage more people and teach more people about the Word of God. And that's our passion here. And that's, that's why we do it every day. That's right. So you heard her. And if you're thinking about becoming a partner, do it now. Here's the Bible guide. They're all here. And we're going on through the rest of the year. So make sure you get yours. The Canadian, the American address is on the screen. We'll be back again. This is Quick Study Television. I'm Rod Hembry along with Janice. And as we study through the scripture, mm -hmm. uh, we have a good time and we want to introduce people and let them know that if they first turn the program on and you just saw us, mm -hmm. that's who we are. And so we want to invite you to join us every day right here. And uh, we'll do this for you. We'll bring you through the scripture. It is really good. In fact, on tomorrow's program, I wanted to tell you, we're going to talk about discretion and knowledge. These are two important values that we must have if we want to have help. We'll talk about that and more coming up on tomorrow's broadcast. It is very important that you are a part of that. Also, Janice studies mm. for us, so what do you have? Well, there may be other people out there like me that find little quirky things very interesting. And so today, there's no great knowledge in this, but I just thought it was kind of cool. I looked at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, and I noticed a bit of a pattern here. I thought it was very interesting to note that in this section of Proverbs 3, the odd-numbered verses, and I'm talking about from 1 to 12, the odd-numbered verses give a command, and the even-numbered verses give a promised result. Really? Really. Now, the only time that... There's a little bit of crossover is in verses 5 and 6. The command spills over into verse 6, but it also results in a promise of the Lord directing our path. Isn't that cool? That is I totally think it is anyway. Amazing. So odd number of verses from 1 to 12 give a command. It's a command. And they even give a promised result. Of that command. Of the command. Yeah. So that, that, that is the poetry. That's Hebrew poetry. There you go. There That's you go. amazing. Do I have time to read a couple of letters? Well, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read one from Grant and Elaine. Uh, they say, thanks to the gang at Quick Study. And we are that, aren't we? <laughs> we are a gang. We have been following your show each day for the past two years since my wife and I got on board the Jesus train. We have gained a great deal of important information from all the segments of each show and hope you continue to send out the words and blessings of the true God and his son, Jesus Christ. And there. Thanks again. And it's Grant and Elaine. So excellent. Grant. Thank you very much thank for you your so words much. of encouragement. Yes, it they means, are. means a lot. I have one more. OK, very good words of encouragement, Grant. Go ahead. Dear Quick Study, my mom and I want to thank you for the wonderful work you are doing as a family. Rod, your Bible study. Janice, your delving deeper and questions to us. Corey, your biblical archaeology and history backgrounds. Ryan, your Did God Really Say? and the series right now on UFOs. And all those that work behind the scenes. And she's got Carry On in capital letters for its God's message his gospel to the world we proclaim. The gates of hell cannot prevail against us, for if God is for us, who can be against us? Love, because Christ has won the victory, we fight with you, praying to our Lord, and that's from Margaret and Janet. So thank you, Margaret and Janet, for your letter, for your support, for your prayer. 
that's encouragement. Margaret and Janet, that is really important. Uh, I like that. Me too. Where she says, we're going to fight yeah. with you. That's right. That's what yes. it says. Yes. And she also talked about um, meeting the people behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And there's only a few of them. You know, we don't have a lot of people behind the scenes. But we do want to thank you for, uh, for seeing them in the promos. You're looking at them. And I'm showing you the people, and they're making their statements about help us and, and all of that. some of them are pretty shy. And some of them are pretty shy, and they're a little uncomfortable that I'm doing this. But uh, it's something that I felt I have to do, and I really want to do it. Mm -hmm. So people are seeing for the first time ever that we broadcast Quick Study, people are going to see every single person. Our staff is the best. It, they, they really are. They really no are the best. anywhere else. And uh, I just I want to bring them to you because you so you can see the TV staff on the program because those are the salaries that you help pay and those are all of the things that happen. And so anyway, that, the promos are there and uh, for this week and the next week and a few others, we want to show you as many as possible from behind the scenes. Anyway, thank you again for the letters. Continue to write to us because we get them and we read them and they're very, very important to us. Now it's time for a call to prayer. successful. We gauge ourselves based upon it, and we live our lives about it. Being successful is not about money or achieving great accomplishments for what this world has to offer. It is important to understand that success to God is very different than success in the world's eyes. When we look at success in the Word of God, it simply means to be excellent at what God has called us to do. God has called some people to be successful at leading business, while some he's called to be successful at working. We must keep our minds open and grow wise to understand that, that to God, success is not as the world sees it. The Lord is amazing. He is amazing. He makes room for us when we fall and we fail. And I want to encourage you that Jesus Christ has made room for you today. He said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so come to Jesus today if you're ready to receive him. And if you want to know who he is, he is Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Come into my life today. Thank <laughs> you.